Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. And before it's illegal to say so, before the ACLU comes after me, Merry Christmas! Yes, there, I said it. Um, I'm wearing a Chris. I'm actually wearing a gift from a friend of mine, the owner of, um, he's going to shoot me, that's so funny, the Happy Puppy. Um, amazing all-natural dog treats got me this. Uh, I wonder if anybody know about any Illuminati to Walt Disney comparisons? Uh, I, was, I was looking that up and some of it, uh, uh, it wasn't so much I believe that Walt was in favor of his movies being used for these things so much as it became what they latched on to in order to, uh, to, to appeal to children, perhaps. For those of you that don't know what MK Ultra is, I have now lost everybody that tuned into the show because I sidetracked myself. Hey, it's Christmas. Um, real quick, I'm going to do this. Uh, you saw it in the title. Christmas Paganism. I'm going, and I do this every year, I'm going to go ahead and explain how Christmas came to be on January 20th. I think on my birthday, January 25th, December the 25th. I'm going to tell you how. It's, I'm going to do it in a very simplified way. Christianity was expanding all over the world at the time, particularly Europe. And in many of these areas, there were pagan holidays that were on December the 25th and this, this time surrounding this area, uh, the solstice and whatnot. It was a very celebratory time for pagans. Not all pagans drank blood and were crazy people. Most of them were just like most of your pagans are today. And they, we do still have them, Wiccans, whatnot. Christians could not, according to their faith, join in these celebrations because it went against their religion. So what they did is their friends and neighbors, friends, were pagans. So they worshipped the pagan items in a way that honored a Christian god. This way, they were able to party with their friends and enjoy the season and not ever break their faith. And at the time, Pagans and Christians live together very well. And that's it. I mean, everybody, you know, like, what's his story going to be? <clears throat> that is the most simple, easy to put together way that I can explain it. How's that? That's the best way that I can explain it. It is not Christians stealing a pagan holiday. It is not anything pagans made Christians do because pagans were awful people at the time. That's how it happened. And I think if more things happened like that today, there'd probably be a lot less division. So we can learn a lot from the ancient Christians, even for those of you who are not Christian. All right, now we're going to go on to actual news. This is from uh, MLive.com. Justin Amish ousted last week from key House panel signals possible revolt against GOP leaders. Dated December 12th. I've been meaning to get to this. Um, those of you that have followed, go look at the uh, older show about Justin Amish. Uh, just search uh, Justin Amish, uh, Correct Views. One of the only people that makes sense on a budget committee who is Justin Amish, and for those of you who don't know who he is, his political views are very akin to that of Ron Paul, was moved from the budget committee. Perhaps the only budget mind that made any damn sense on the budget committee. Um, him and some other very, um, well, economic people, actually. Very, very well thought out, very, very anti-status quo, economic, economic minded people were all moved from this in favor of neocons and socialists. Grand Rapids, Michigan, U.S. Representative Justin Amish who last week was ousted from the coveted spot on the House Budget Committee, because he made too much sense, has all but signaled possible revolt against GOP leaders in that chamber. Um, for those of you that don't know how I do Christmas, since YouTube refuses to put most of my videos up that were lost, 
just click on the little box that will be down at the bottom of this at the end of the video and it will be clear. Um, I don't do horrible news on Christmas posts. I don't do it and I'm not doing it on this. So these stories are going to be stories of victories for the liberty movement or at least humanity. Amish A. Cascade Township Republican and one of four congressmen booted from key panels last week for breaking with Tea Party leaders on crucial votes contended Wednesday, December 12th, that there is a deep unrest in the party because of the removals. Good! They're not getting away with it. The widely publicized ousters made headlines all last week, particularly on conservative blogs, and Amish and his bereft colleagues have been vocal in their dismay. Short of saying what an uprising against House Speaker John Boehner Boner by the Republican conference would look like, Amish said House GOP leaders are in a lot of trouble. Music! Christmas carols! Music to the ears! We are fighting back. The Republicans wanted all of us gone from the GOP, and you know what? They got their wish. And those of them that those that are staying have the support of us that no longer support the Republican Party. So the Republican Party got what they wanted and still didn't get what they wanted, which is wonderful. They're going to have to make amends, and there will be a new leadership team in place, Amish told M Live on Wednesday. It may not happen right away, he added, but it will happen. Boehner and his lieutenants are embroiled in talks with President Barack Obama to avoid the so-called fiscal cliff by the year's end, lest automatic spending cuts and tax increases take effect. They're going to drive a deeper wedge into the Republican Party, and a lot of them are going to come to the Libertarian Party. I'm proud to say I have voted Libertarian in most elections throughout my adult life, and I voted Libertarian last election. I am registered as a Republican because in Ohio, you switch back when you vote again. Next time I vote, I will re-register as Libertarian. I spent most of my adult life in that party anyhow. But it is very good to know <clears throat> that the Republicans are continuing to um, push away the more liberty-minded people. Because we're going to have some liberty-minded people in the Republican Party, but the Libertarian Party and the independent movement is going to grow and grow and grow. And these people are not going to go into the Green Party so that they can be taxed worse than they are now. Um, this is more good news. Daily Tech. Science. Expanding foam stops internal bleeding in soldiers. Well, I mean, no matter what you think about the war, this in inevitably will help all of mankind, so long as, you know, it doesn't end up uh, being toxic. You know, you, you, these, these wonder drugs come out, and later on you find out, you know, side effects could include immediate death. Um, but other than that, um, this is good news. Again, Merry Christmas. The foam can reduce blood loss sixfold and boost the rate of survival at three hours post-injury to 72%. A new type of foam, that is, that is injected into the body could save the lives of countless soldiers wounded on the battlefield, or people that may cut themselves extremely badly, and uh, you get the point. The U.S. Department of Defense, DOD, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, has been working with a medical company that can help soldiers survive internal abdominal injuries and internal hemorrhaging. The DOD strives to accomplish what is known as the Golden Hour, which transports a wounded soldier to a medical facility in under an hour. However, for those suffering from internal abdominal injuries and internal hemorrhaging, their chances of surviving an entire hour with large amount of blood losses are quite slim. So basically what they did it says, this is how the foam works. Two liquid phases are injected into the abdominal cavity. The first liquid phase is a polynyol phase, and the second is an iso isocyanate phase. When these two liquids are combined, they do two different reactions that take place. That's worded horribly. The first expands the liquid to about 30 times its original volume where it fits the surfaces of the injured tissue. The second transforms the liquid into a solid foam, it says, which becomes a polyurethane polymer. 
It is capable of resisting intra-abdominal blood loss and can expand through both pooled and clotted blood. So basically this foam <clears throat> expands and um, it manages not to be of a toxic nature to the organs around it. And basically we found a new way to stop bleeding. And hopefully we'll find this kinds of thing in auto accidents and severe house injuries and uh, perhaps even shootings, stabbings, that sort of thing. Progress for mankind is hopefully what it will be used for. Uh, brought to you by the Arcadia Grill, located on Court Avenue, that is in downtown Canton. Go to the Arcadia Grill. They have absolutely delicious food. I've been raving about their spaghetti and meatballs ever since I've had them on the show, and the reason is because it is delicious. Best Italian bread you've ever had. Get a 151 and Coke and tell them you heard about them from the correct views. Last story, I want to, <clears throat> last story that I want to get to. Mind over matter helps paralyzed woman control robotic arm. Doctors in Pittsburgh stunned at ability of patient who has reached levels of performance never seen before. More good news! A woman who is paralyzed from the neck down has stunned doctors with her extraordinary skill at using a robotic arm which is controlled by her thoughts alone. How many of you have always found this to be like your biggest fear? Like right up there with like cancer or AIDS, this kind of injury right here. Listen to this. The 52-year-old 50, the patient called Jen lost the use of her limbs more than 10 years ago to a degenerative disease that damaged her spinal cord. The disruption of her nervous system was the equivalent to having a broken neck. But in trailing sessions at the University of Pittsburgh, doctors found she quickly learned to make fluid movements with the brain-controlled robotic arm, reaching levels of performance never seen before. Doctors recruited the woman's test robot. Doctors recruited the woman to test robotic arm that is used to control a new kind of computer program that translates the natural brain activity used to move our limbs into commands to move the robotic arm. It goes on. Go look up the article. This is wonderful news. Three wonderful stories. I've managed to do a whole show without anything absolutely dreadful on it. Um, of course, it means you. It means you have to do something. It means that you have to push to these sort of, sorts of things to be used for the betterment of you and I. These things have a, uh, a knack for stopping bleeding when someone is dying on a battlefield. It also can help us. How much could we have accomplished if we as a nation, I mean, we as a world for that matter, not that I'm into this one world government to accomplish this because it won't, but if we would focus on these sorts of things, we could have had healing foam 50 years ago. Maybe, what if we had focused on solving things like world hunger without using GMOs with the money we spent on trying to bomb each other, both us, Germany, Japan, all of them. These are the kinds of things we can accomplish, but unfortunately we only see these things coming to us via war. Um, we don't even get wonderful things from NASA anymore. The money from NASA is gone. And the NASA is all, but, you know, it's not even flying anymore. People. Three good stories right here. Push for things like this. And try to vote for people that will get us out of these wars. Perhaps even out of the UN. And that's a huge Christmas gift. <laughs> and um, just in a direction that has something that can bring good to people and good to humanity without having to be discovered at the end of a rifle. You are listening to the correct views. Thank you for doing so. Please donate if you can, because all money goes to a better show, better gear, better computer. Christmas, I, I need you guys. Donate whatever you think that the show is worth. Thank you, good night, God bless, and Merry Christmas.